Hi all, welcome to the CA classroom. In this lecture, we'll be continuing our discussion of the Negotiable Instrument Act. Video for part 1 and part 2, Basics of Negotiable Instrument Act, link is in description. We'll be discussing the remaining concepts in Negotiable Instrument Act. Now let us start with the next concept. Rights of Negotiable Instrument may be transferred. Now, let's say A drew a bill on B for rupees 10,000. It is bills receivable for A and bills payable for B. So A is the maker and B is the acceptor. P is also A in this case because B is going to make the payment to A. Now the question we are going to discuss here is rights of negotiable instrument. What is the rights of negotiable instrument here? The bill of exchange. The rights in the negotiable instrument may be transferred either by negotiation or by assignment. What do you mean by negotiation? Now, one of the most important elements of negotiable instrument is allowing it to be delivered from one person to another. For example, let's say P is a third person C. Let's say negotiable instrument here is drawn for the purpose of giving a negotiable instrument to C who is the payee. Now, if I am not able to deliver my promissory note or bill of exchange or check to the person, then what is the purpose? Now, for example, Let's say A is drawing a check. I am drawing a check. I have to make payment to B. Let's say I have to make payment to B. So I drew a check. I am the drawer of the check A. The drawee of the check who is going to make the payment to State Bank of India. Payment will be made to whom? B. So B is the payee here. Now, if I don't transfer this check to B, payee, then he cannot claim the money from SBI. Therefore, negotiation says you should be able to transfer the negotiable instrument. What are the modes? What are the various modes in which negotiable instruments can be negotiated? First, whenever the negotiable instrument is payable to the bearer, meaning whoever is having possession of the negotiable instrument, he will get the payment, he will become the payee. Then you can simply transfer the negotiable instrument just by delivery. If there is a blank check, whoever is having the blank check will get the payment. By mere delivery, he will get possession of the negotiable instrument and also rights in the negotiable instrument. Where the negotiable instrument is payable to order, specific person's name is mentioned, payable to specific person, let's say in this case B, then transfer of negotiable instrument can take place by endorsement through delivery. What do you mean by endorsement? I will endorse the bill of exchange. For example, the bill will be endorsed to another person. Let's say B has to make some payment to C. So he will endorse his bill receivable to C and B will directly make the payment to C. What are the various modes in which endorsement can be done? First is a blank endorsement where the party A who is endorsing his negotiable instrument, he will only sign and leave the name of the person. The payee's name will be left as blank. That will be given to C. C can claim the money from B or C can further endorse it to some other person. Full or special endorsement meaning sign will also be mentioned, name will also be mentioned. So I will endorse it to C with his name mentioned. C can claim the money later from B. What do you mean by restrictive endorsement? It is similar to full endorsement but in full endorsement C can further endorse the negotiable instrument to other parties. Restrictive endorsement meaning I will mention in the endorsement letter saying that C, the person with whose name I am mentioning, cannot further endorse it to any other person. Restrictive endorsement, further endorsement cannot be done. Next, partial endorsement, a part of the negotiable instrument, let's say amount is 10,000, only 2,000 I am going to endorse, no. So though, such kind of partial endorsement as per the act is invalid. Therefore, partial endorsement cannot be done. Last one is conditional endorsement. What do you mean by conditional endorsement? There will be some conditions over here. In detail about this, we will see in the next section. The other way in which rights of negotiable instrument may be transferred is by assignment. The power of assignment comes from transfer of property act. Assignment means I am assigning the rights. I have the right in this negotiable instrument. I am assigning it to some other person. So transfer of ownership. Who is the owner of bills receivable here? A. Transfer of ownership of the instrument from one person, assigner, A here, to another person, assignee, where the assignee becomes entitled to recover the money. 
assignee will now be entitled to recover the money important to note the assignee is not holder in due course these are the two ways in which negotiable instrument may be transferred now let us discuss what is conditional endorsement now let us discuss the different types of conditional endorsement let us start with facultative endorsement what do you mean by facultative endorsement let us say a drew a bill on b where b will pay to a rupees 10000 Now A is endorsing this bill to C. Normally, what happens when A is endorsing the bill to C? C will claim the money from B. B will make the payment to C because C is the payee. You know, A is endorsing the bill to C. If C presents the bill to B and B fails to make the payment, C will give notice of dishonor to A. Facultative endorsement means. some rights and liabilities can be restricted for example a can restrict the right he can waive off the right saying c need not give notice of dishonor to a this is, this kind of endorsement is called facultative endorsement next liability depending on a contingency now the payment by b to c depends upon contingency upon an event happening let's say they say if it rains in the next 100 days then i will make the payment If rain, if it does not rain in the next hundred days, then payment will not be made. So as long as the event is contingent, might happen, might not happen, the bill will be valid. The minute the event becomes impossible, the event cannot happen now. Then the minute event becomes impossible, the bill will also not be valid. Next, let us see what is sans recourse endorsement and sans phrase endorsement. Let us take a small example where A. Drew a bill on B for rupees five thousand, payable to C. Payable to C. Now C is further endorsing this to D. D has further endorsed this to E. Let us stop over here. C has further endorsed to D, and D has further endorsed to E. And E will ask B to make the payment to E on due date. Now, if B fails to make the payment. E will ask D to make the payment to him. D will in turn ask C, and C will in turn ask A because initially bill was drawn by A, so A will bear the liability. He has to pay these parties. A will later recover it from B. This is how a normal bill works. Now, sans recourse means the minute A is endorsing the bill to C, or let's say C is endorsing the bill to D, and he is used writing the words over there, sans recourse, recourse meaning. What do you mean by sans recourse? The minute C is endorsing the bill to D, any subsequent liability, all the future endorsements, D is endorsing it to E, E is, if E is endorsing to anybody else, if there is any failure, C will not take up any subsequent liability. Let us say C is endorsing it to F, and F is endorsing it back to C. Then these three parties, C can claim the money if the bill is failing. C can claim the money from. the previous par parties in the endorsement because c got it from f for f previous is e for e previous is d then c can claim the money from d e and f but these parties cannot claim the money from c because while c was endorsing he used the word sans recourse what do you mean by sans phrase sans phrase endorsement means the party who is endorsing c is endorsing it to subsequent parties C does not want the subsequent parties to suffer any expense because of him. So when he uses the word sans phrase, the subsequent parties will not have any expense. Subsequent parties will not have any expense in the bill because of the person who is endorsing the bill. So these are the different types of conditional endorsement. Let us proceed to the next concept. Now let us discuss the liability of parties in different cases. What is the liability of an agent? Now, agent on behalf of the principal, if he is going to sign any promissory note, bill of exchange, or cheque, what is his liability? Agent should tell the other party that I am the agent signing on behalf of the principal. But if he is keeping quiet, not telling the other party that he is the agent, then he will be personally liable. Similar concept we have also seen in Indian Contract Act under agency. So he will be personally liable if he does not specify he was not an he was an agent. If he does not specify to another party, he was he was an agent, then he will be personally liable. But let's say I specify to the third party saying I am an agent, but the third party is inducing me saying still 
you go out and sign, don't worry, you will not be liable. Only the principal will be liable. Then if the third party is inducing the agent to enter into the contract by signing the negotiable instrument, then in that case, if he is induced by the third party, agent will not be liable. This concept also we discussed in Indian Contract Act. Next. What is the liability of legal representative of the disease party? Let's say A and B. A drew a bill on B where B has to pay to A rupees 10,000. After drawing the bill, B died. Now what happens to legal representative of disease person? He will be personally liable. Legal representative of disease person will be personally liable. Exception for this, the legal representative is expressly limiting his liability to the assets received by him. If he is expressly limiting his liability to the assets received by him, then he will be liable only to the extent of the assets received by him. What is the liability of drawer in case of negotiable instrument? Now let's say A drew a bill on B where payment has to be made to C. So A is giving the bill to C. C will claim the money from B. B is the drawee. Now if B fails to make the payment to the payee, then what is the liability of the drawer? Drawer A will be liable to C. So drawer will be liable to payee when the negotiable instrument is dishonored because of non-payment or non-acceptance by the drawee. In case of dishonor, C should also give a notice to the drawer. Then drawer will be liable to the pay. This is the liability of drawer. Next, what is liability of drawee of check? Drawee of check will always be a banker. Will always be a banker. I am giving a check to somebody else. My bank, let's say State Bank of India will be the drawee. What is liability of State Bank of India? Now, Let's say I gave a check to another party, he is presenting the check, bank is denying the payment, bank is not making the payment, even though there are funds available in the account, everything is perfect. If bank is denying the payment, then banker will compensate the drawer for the loss suffered by him, banker will directly compensate, drawee will compensate only the drawer and he will not compensate the payee because here contract is between the drawer and drawee and not between the drawee and the payee. But the bank or the drawee in this case can refuse to pay if any of the conditions are satisfied. Meaning for a sufficient cost, reasonable reason, then they can refuse to pay. For example, undated check. If check is not having a date, then they can refuse to pay. Stale check. Check has to be presented within three months from the date on the check. If you are presenting a check which is one year old, they have right to refuse the check. Incomplete. Instrument is incomplete with respect to amount or signature is missing or anything is missing, then they will refuse to pay. Post dated check. Say check is dated on 10th October. Let's say today is 7th October. You are presenting a check on 7th October when it is dated 10th October. They can refuse, ask you to come back on 10th of October. Funds on lien. If any funds in the account is taken on lien, then if there are no funds, they cannot pay the money. They can refuse to pay. Overdraft limit is exceeded then they can refuse to pay. If the drawer has become insolvent and a notice is given to bank that the drawer has become insolvent or application is pending, he is going to become insolvent, then they can refuse to pay. Account is closed by the drawer. Let's say the account check is dated 10th. On 11th, I am closing the account. On 12th, the payee is presenting the check. Account is closed, therefore bank can refuse to make the payment. If the drawer account holder dies, and then notice is given to bank about the death of the drawer, then also bank can refuse to make the payment. Wherever check has bounced, check has dishonored, what the payee has to do? The payee has to intimate to the drawer within 13 days, sorry, within 30 days, within 30 days, he has to intimate that check has bounced or check has been dishonored. The drawer will take another 15 days to make the payment. If he does not make the payment from the date of dishonor, the payee within the next 30 days, he has to initiate the effort to file a suit against the drawer. If he does not take any effort within the next 30 days, then he cannot take any effort later also. So totally overall, he will have 45 days to take action. Next, liability of maker of note and acceptor of bill, liability of endorser, we will see in the next section. Now let us quickly complete what is liability of an endorser. Now, Let's say A drew a bill on B and he endorsed this bill to C and C is further endorsing it to D. 
and C as D as further enters into E and E as further enters into F. Now F is claiming the money, F is the final pay, F is claiming the money from B. B is not making the payment. F will ask E to make the payment to F, E will ask make D to make the payment, D will ask C to make the payment and C will ask A to make the payment. So liability of endorser is, generally the endorser is liable to every other subsequent endorser in case of dishonor of a negotiable instrument. However, we saw exceptions in case of conditional endorsement. Next, maker of a note, maker of a note means maker of a promissory note. I am promising to pay some money to somebody else and acceptor of a bill. Acceptor of a bill of exchange, the creditor who is making the payment bills payable. What is their liability? They are promising to make the payment, so they have to make the payment. However, if they fail to make the payment, they have to compensate the other party for any loss or damage that they have sustained. Promissory note, the maker will compensate the other party and in case of acceptor of the bill, he will com compensate the maker of the bill. So, whoever is supposed to make the payment in case of promissory note and bill will compensate the other party for any loss or damage sustained. Let us proceed to the next concept. Now, let us discuss a few more concepts in Negotiable Instrument Act. Let's say what is right of parties to an instrument obtained illegally or unlawful. A part of this we already discussed earlier. Let's say a negotiable instrument is obtained by any person by theft or any unlawful ways, then he cannot claim money on that negotiable instrument because it is obtained by theft or thing. However, if he is going to endorse it to somebody else, I am obtaining a negotiable instrument illegally or unlawful ways or by theft, but I am endorsing it to somebody else, then the holder in due course is obtaining it in good faith, therefore he can claim the money from the drawing. The only exception is holder in due course can claim the money even if the prior party is obtained it by theft or illegal ways. However, holder in due course also cannot claim the money from drawee if such a negotiable instrument is drawn by forgery. Let's say A is the maker, I forge signature of A and I created this negotiable instrument. When it comes by forgery, negotiable instrument is not even valid. Next. What is the concept of an accommodation bill? Simple example, let's say A and B are two friends, friends from childhood. Now, both require money or A requires money for a specific purpose. So, what A is doing, he is drawing an accommodation bill. He is drawing a bill on B. He is drawing a bill on B for rupees 25,000. B is promising to pay the money to A. However, this bill is drawn without consideration, without consideration and what A is doing with the bill, he is discounting it with the bank and obtaining money from the bank for his emergency purpose. This bill between A and B without consideration is called an accommodation bill. However, if A is endorsing this to third parties, the person who is obtaining the bill, the NRC, has a right to claim the money from this is the concept of accommodation bill. Next, what do you mean by noting and protest? Whenever a negotiable instrument is dishonored, the payee has to intimate the notary public. What the notary public will do, he will again present the bill for payment to the drawee one more time asking him to make the payment. If the drawee is again not making the payment and dishonoring the payment, then the notary public will note the same and give a protest certificate. Will give a protest certificate saying this bill has been dishonored, this is the protest certificate. Noting and protest is required. It is optional for an inland instrument, but if it's a foreign instrument, if it's a foreign instrument, foreign negotiable instrument, then noting and protest is mandatory. Let us proceed to few more concepts in negotiable instrument act. Now, once a negotiable instrument is drawn, made, what happens next? On the due date at the time of maturity, you have to present it to get the payment. So what happens here? Presentation of bills for acceptance. Normally those bills where due dates are already fixed, then he will make the payment before you make the presentation itself. But however, those negotiable instruments which are payable at site or demand, that is the computation of months or the number of days specified, the count will start only after you present the negotiable instrument at site or demand, what is the process? 
the payee will present the same for acceptance within reasonable time to the drawing. Let's say A drew a bill on B and endorsed it to C, where C is the payee. Now C has to present this bill to B for B to accept the same. So I will present the bill to B for acceptance within reasonable time. D will sign and make acceptance that he will make the payment within specified time as mentioned. Now draw E will sign and he will make the payment after a specified time. Now presentation, when should he present? If time and place is specified, then you can present at the time and place which is specified. If time and place is not specified, then present in business hours due on a business day. Next, if payment is not done by the drawee or if payment is delayed by some time, then interest will be paid by the drawee based on the terms which they have been agreed. If no such interest provision is mentioned, then the act is saying interest has to be paid at 18%. This is the concept of presentation of bills for acceptance. Let us proceed to the next concept. Now let us understand the different modes of discharge of an instrument when the instrument comes to an end. First, by payment. Drawer or maker drew an instrument on the drawee asking to make the payment to the payee. He made the payment, so instrument comes to an end. Discharge of an instrument. Payment is done by the drawee on time. By cancellation. Holder or payee. Payee is a person to whom payment will be made for this instrument. Holder is the one for whom payment is going to be made. He is cancelling the instrument. Then instrument comes to an end. Discharge of an instrument. If any material alteration takes place to the negotiable instrument, if date is altered, amount is altered, tampering with such instrument, this leads to discharge of an instrument. Now let us see modes of dishonor. Dishonor meaning amount is not paid or any other modes how instrument will be dishonored. First, dishonor by non-acceptance by the drawing. Dishonor by non-acceptance, what are the reasons for dishonor? First, Default in acceptance by the drawee. I am asking the drawee to accept the promissory note or the bill of exchange. He is not accepting it. Default by the person leads to dishonor. I have sold goods to him. He has to make payment to me for which I gave him a bill. Now he is not accepting a bill. This leads to dishonor. Or another example. For example, drawee is bank, State Bank of India. I got a check. I went and deposited the check in the bank. Check has bounced. Dishonor of check. Because reason insufficient funds. Therefore, dishonor by non-acceptance. Drawee is a fictitious person. Drawee is not even in existence. It's a fictitious person. Therefore, dishonor by non-acceptance. Drawee cannot be found. After reasonable search, drawee is not to be found. The drawee is incompetent to enter into a contract. I drew a bill. I am the maker. I signed it, but the drawee is a minor. He is incompetent to enter into a contract. Therefore, dishonor of the negotiable instrument by non-acceptance. Next, the drawee gives a conditional acceptance. He is saying he will accept only if some conditions are satisfied, for which the maker or the drawer is not satisfied with those conditions, which leads to dishonor by non-acceptance. Another mode of dishonor of negotiable instrument is dishonor by non-payment. Payment is not made. The check example, classic example, check or any instrument, payment is not made. Then the payee, I should get the payment. The payee can sue the drawee for non-payment, but before which he has to give a notice to the drawer and the endorser. The person who is drawing the bill or from whom I receive the bill, endorser, within 30 days of such dishonor. This is about modes of discharge of an instrument and modes of dishonor of an instrument.